What was Monique like as a little girl? What you seeing right now, baby? Ain't nothing. <laughs> so you always... I just got... Listen, let me tell you something. A lot of people in this industry don't like me, right? Yeah. They didn't like me as a little girl, Shannon. I'm so used to this shit. People didn't <laughs> like me because I was going to tell it. I'm right. going to tell. I'm going to tell on you. Right. So what you seeing right now is the same thing you're getting. They tried to fight my ass in the 12th grade, Shannon. They surrounded me, right. a group of them. Okay, wanted to fight on me. Why? Because I told the truth. What you tell? I told I told Andre that that was not Lamar's baby. Because oh, that's come Andre, on, Mo. That's what Lamar. That ain't your place. Let me tell. Wait a minute, oh uh, sugar, you gonna calm yourself down? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you see Shannon losing herself with me? <laughs> you better back that up, Shannon. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Okay. Okay. I'm a person for right. 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 Mm -hmm. And if you tell me something and you say, Monique, I've done something to somebody, but don't say nothing. Shannon, I'm going to need you to fix that because if you don't fix it, I'm going to have to tell that because it's wrong. So when she tells me this is not his baby, but I'm going to tell him it's his baby. I can't let you do that. That's not right. Wow. So what I stand for is right. And, and I think where we run into a problem in our community, mm -hmm. in our group, we get so caught in, well, that's not your place, but you see wrong happening, right? Mm -hmm. So when you see wrong happening, what you do? Do you just stand back and say, that ain't my business? Or do you look and say, well, I knew that wasn't his baby. Now the baby 21 years old and he's trying to find his father. Mm -hmm. What you going to do? I'm asking you, what you going to do? Well, honestly, Monique, if somebody say, well, Shannon, I'm going to tell you something and I'm going to tell you this in confidentiality and I don't want to go any further than me, you, and this table. Yes. It stays with me, him, and the table. Well, let me say this because I'm going to go back and forth <laughs> with your ass, okay? <laughs> I would say before you tell me, did you hurt somebody? Yeah, okay, yes. Before you tell me, <clears throat> is this something that would make me question your character? Before you tell me, you got to be clear about what you get ready to tell me because if you're getting ready to tell me something and I know that you've done something wrong, I know that you're wrong and I not say anything. That's why people are allowed to keep harming people for years to come. See Harvey Weinstein? Yes. Well, there's a lot of people that knew what was happening. But and it felt it wasn't their place. It wasn't, it wasn't their place. Them. Right. Until it becomes you. So I think the moment we get into a space, and I was in the 11th grade at the time. Right. Okay. But when we get into a space where we say, listen, if I know you're doing wrong, and I take a position that's not my place. Eventually, you will succumb to what you support. What was your relationship with the young lady that told you this in confidentiality? When I'm you could... not going to focus on, I was in 11th grade, now I'm 56. But when she told me, I told her, I'm going to tell. See, I'm that. I'm going to tell him what you said. So we clear. I'm going to tell him what you said because that's not right. Oh, my goodness, Mo. See, I think that's the problem that we're dealing with right now, Shannon. Okay. When we know something is wrong, everything Cat Williams sat here and said, right. we all know it to be the truth. However, we get so caught up in, well, I ain't going to say nothing. Right. Well, can you believe he said it? Or can you? When, or it's the messenger. It, it's the messenger, baby. We get so caught up in the messenger that we'll overlook the message. People have a hard time hearing a five foot five giant tell the truth. People have a hard time with a black woman over 200 pounds tell the truth because people that look like us, mm -hmm. we should just be grateful we got invited to the party. Right. We right. should just be grateful that someone paid us attention. I've dealt with that my whole life. I've dealt with that. Mm -hmm. So when you get to a space where you say, listen, I want to be free. I want to be free. Mm -hmm. I don't want to walk around intimidated, scared, fearful. What might happen? What they going to what they going to say? What they going to do? If it's your story and it's the truth, tell it. Because what you can do is be in a position to prevent it happening to someone else over and over and over again. So if I go back to the 11th grade with that sister who's no longer with us, rest, rest her with that sister, I would do that again. Because if you tell me something and we know it's wrong, mm -hmm. but you're going to pin that on somebody else, is that right? No, it's not right. And what would your Aunt Mary do? <laughs> 
Man, Monique, I swear, Monique. You're not answering my question. What would your Aunt Mary do? Well, she's going to tell it because she's going to tell anything anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> they probably okay. don't have to tell her. But that's why you love Aunt Mary. <laughs> yeah. Because Aunt Mary kept it in check. Yeah. Even though you didn't want to tell her, right. she was going to tell that baby, you know that's not your daddy. Right. We're not going to play like that. You love Aunt Mary. I do. We've been taught to say you mistreated me, you abused me, you violated me, you disrespected me, you belittled me. But I'm supposed to look at you at Thanksgiving and say, how you doing, Unc? That's what we've been taught. You swallow that pain. That's why people have such a problem with Cat Williams. People have a problem with people that says, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the truth. And that causes a ruckus. And you would say, why are people upset with the truth? Mm. When you hear Steve Harvey say, there are repercussions when you tell the truth. Well, remember when we were children? Mm -hmm. What would your grandmother tell you? Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Because if not, there will be Re what? Repercussions. Right. Well, now it's got turned around. When you tell the truth, there'll be repercussions. So what's the opposite of that? Should I tell a lie and get a reward? So that's how we're rolling right now. That's mm -hmm. how we're dealing with one another right now. So when it comes to family and people saying, oh, Monique, how could you? Listen, I want to live the rest of this journey that I have in peace. I want to be with my family, in love with my man, he in love with me. We watch our babies grow and develop their own families. I don't need anything in the midst of that because you family that I should accept that trauma I should accept you not taking accountability for what you've done, what you've said, and we just washed a slate. That's why we're in the position we are now as a community, mm -hmm. as a black community, as a community in entertainment. Everybody's been so afraid to say, look what they did to me. Look what they said. And it's like, oh, well, listen now, we don't want to ruffle no feathers, feathers, especially if the messenger doesn't fit the what people should think the messenger is supposed to look like. Right. And we keep repeating history, Shannon. Is it a situation, Monique, where people look and say, well, you made it thus far when well, it couldn't have been that bad? Because if it has been as bad as you say it is, Monique, how would you have ever gotten out of B-more? How would you have ever gotten into Hollywood? How would you ever have a talk show? How would you ever be on a sitcom? So how is it that bad, Monique, and you end up like this? You know, when you first got in the NFL, yes, man. your eyes were like this. Yes. And it was, oh, I made it. I'm here. Right. And then after you start getting in it and you started seeing things and you started feeling things and you start, now your eyes start getting a little closer because now you're understanding what the business is. Right. So when you first walk through the door, you're walking through the door saying, come on, baby. Oh, this is all I've ever prayed for. And when my baby Cat Williams sat here and said, no one's ever gone out to LA and got a sitcom like that. I was in LA for three months and here comes a show called The Parkers. Now, you know when Cat Williams said gatekeepers? Yeah. Kevin Hart, mm -hmm. I do his um, podcast. Yes. And I want y'all to re-listen to the podcast so you can hear it for yourself. When he first comes on, he says, you're like my mother, you're like my aunt, you're like my sister. Okay, mm -hmm. then we do the podcast. We speak about the Tyler Perry situation. Oprah Winfrey, he said, I don't really know Oprah, but I'm going to reach out to Tyler. I appreciate that. Kevin kept his word. He reached out to Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back about maybe a week or so later. He said, Mo, I talked to Tyler. He said he don't want to revisit it. He said, but I tell you what, let's move past that, Mo. Let's just move past that and let's just do great things. So whatever That's you, what Kevin said. I want you to hear me, Kevin Hart. Let's move past that, Mo. Let's do some great things together. Don't even worry about it. Whatever y'all want to do, I will partner with you. I'll executive produce with you. You just let me know what you want to do. Now, let me say that before we go any further, because okay. I want to make sure I give Kevin Hart his proper credit. When my family was up against the wall, Kevin Hart wrote us a check and said, here you go. We're forever grateful for that. When we were able to give it back, we said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think like they me and my them. husband. So I want to make sure I put that out there. That, was, that brother really helped us out when we needed to be helped out. Then when he came back with, I got you, 
I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce. I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol. And we're trying to get our talk show back. Mo, whatever it is, I got you. Now, Kevin Hart is one of the biggest entertainers right now in the world. Correct. right? And was then. We got off the phone with Kevin Hart. We called in the mall immediately and said, Kevin Hart said, whatever we want to do, he got us. He's going to partner executive use. They was like, oh, this is incredible because when you put Kevin Hart's name on it, you already know what it is. Correct. Two weeks go by. We get a call from in the mall. In the mall says, we just got a call from Kevin Hart's manager, Dave Becky. And Dave Becky said, Kevin doesn't want anything to do with Monique. So whatever she told y'all, he doesn't want to do anything with her, nothing. You know, he doesn't want any any kind of relationship with Monique. So what changed between the two weeks and when, and, and plus he gave you a check, you gave the money back, then said he would partner with you, executive produce, whatever you need, Mo, hey, we got you. So what transpired or what do you think transpired between then, that two that two week period? Well, soon as we got off the phone and they told us what Kevin manager David Becky said, I called Kevin Hart immediately. I said, hey, baby, we just got off the phone with Endemol, and they said Dave Becky called them up and said, you don't want anything to do with me. He said, Mo, that's that's a miscommunication. I can tell you right now. I said, wait a minute. Are you okay, though, with this white man calling them up, getting in between our relationship at something? You said, he said, Mo, I'm, that's a miscommunication, and we're going to talk Tuesday. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it's a miscommunication. That was two years ago. If you talk to him, I talk to him. I've never talked back to Kevin Hart again. So that's what we're faced with. When you allow somebody to come in between a relationship with a woman that you said, I'm like your mother. You said, I'm like these things. I didn't ask you for that. So everything that that baby was saying, sitting here, everything he was saying was on the up and up. Because when you hear people say, get the anger out your heart. Oh, man, no one's saying he's lying. No one ever said I was lying. It's so easy to discount and devalue because of what we look like. Right. When we have our juggernauts, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, the Kevin Hart, these are our juggernauts of our community. These are the people that our babies say, when I grow up, I want to be that. Yes. I want to be like that. So we have to call those people to the mat and say, listen, what are you teaching our babies? You're feeding poison because you're showing them your private jet. I'm going to show you my mansion. I'm going to show you my fancy cars. But my character is shot and I'm bankrupt. I got a lot of money in my bank. It's more zeros than some of them can, than we can imagine. But their character, they are bankrupt. Those are bankrupt people. So everybody that Kat sat right here and told you about, I can't wait to see your next interviews with those people. They ain't coming on now, Mo. Invite them. I have. They not going to do it. Well, look, I've already done Steve. I have a relationship with Steve. He, do him he, again. Do him again. And I'm going to say this. I'm trying to get Oprah and, uh, and Tyler, though. Baby, we got him. Y'all, come on. Stop playing. They ain't coming on, Mo. Thanks to you. You know how. And I don't want to put you on a spot, but I'm going to say it. because <coughs> I appreciate you as a black man and what you're doing. Thank you. If you are my friend mm -hmm. and someone says to me, Monique Shannon Sharp wronged me. And you my friend? Yeah. I'ma call my friend. You can come to me. And I'ma say, hey, is what they saying true? And if you get to him and Han, I'ma tell you till you fix it, you and I can't talk. Because if you'll do them that way. You do it'll be a matter of time before you do it to me. So if Steve Harvey is your friend, mm -hmm. you call your friend up and you ask him, is what our sister saying right, man? Because if it is, we can't do that to her if that's our sister. See, it took a transgender named T.S. Madison. It was a guy named Jamaica Carter. We, Jamaica Carter and our mutual friend. Jamaica Carter and our friends. Mm -hmm. T.S. Madison was a mutual friend. Mm -hmm. So Jamaica called me and said, would you mind doing T.S. Madison's show? I go do T.S. Madison's show. When I tell T.S. Madison when the camera cuts, I said, listen, your friend is wrong. She said, Monique Lee Daniels is my friend. I said, then you need to call your friend and tell him to fix this shit. She said, I will. Within a couple of days, who did I get a call from? Lee, Lee Daniels. See, that's a friend. Mm -hmm. That's a true friend that's saying, I love you so much. 
that I want to make sure that's not on your heart or your conscience. Let's fix it. Let's make it right. So when people ask Lee now, when we did the deliverance together, how was it to work with Monique? It was as if we had never parted ways because he fixed it. He owned it and he took accountability for it. I can't now keep you to the cross because you've owned it. Right. I've had to be forgiven. Right. So I appreciate mm-hmm. the, that someone had grace and mercy with me. So I'm going to have that with other people when they take accountability for what they've done. Want to join Club Shay Shay? Become an official member by hitting that subscribe button where you never know who's going to be joining us for drinks and conversation. Don't be late to the party because you know we like to do something before two something.